Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Most frequently I get this question that which transit is most important for me because we have transit of Saturn, Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, Sun, all the planets. Which one is it? Every transit is important in its own way, but which is the most important transit? How do you know that? Well, it's very simple actually. It depends on which dasha you are running. Okay, so if you are running, uh, now when I say it's simple, it is not simple uh, in its interpretation, but you can know through the houses actually. That's very simple. But the interpretation is still difficult because astrology is a very complex science. So I'll try to explain with some examples. Hopefully you understand. <laughs> All right, so. Suppose you have a planet in 10th house. Suppose you have uh, Saturn in the 10th house. So then uh, you are running Saturn Mahadasha. Mahadasha is too big. Let's take a Antaradasha example. So now we see we have Saturn Mahadasha and Saturn is in 10th house. Okay. Let's take Aries, exam Aries ascendant example. Uh, 10th Lord, 11th Lord in the 10th house forming uh, Mahapurushyo, Shasha Mahapurushyo. Very strong Saturn is. Let's assume it. Now, the thing is, uh, for those entire 19 years of Saturn Mahadasha, the 10th house transits will be very, 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 very crucial. Okay? And uh, you also have to check the uh, transits which are happening in trines to that house. Which are the trines to the 10th house? You have the 2nd house, the 6th house. Okay? And you also have to see the transit of the Karakas of that house so if you have the 10th house and the 11th house getting activated in your dashas then which transits are most important now because it is saturn saturn has the lord of 10 sitting in 10 so saturn's transit is very important then the most important planet is mercury why because he's the karaka for the 10th house and Sun also is very, very, very crucial because Sun is the Karaka for name, fame, power, position, authority, status, which the 10th house represents. And when these Karakas or these Lords uh, will transit that house or the trines, that is the most crucial months. Okay? So for example, if you are Aries Lagna and you are running Mahadasha of Saturn, so for every year, in those 19 years, which are the most crucial periods for you? First, first check, when uh, second house. So first house is Aries. Okay. So Aries, sun enters Aries, when does sun enter? 15th April to 15th May. That is the time sun is in Aries. Okay. Then it enters second house, 15 May to 15 June. So, if you are having Saturn in 10th and you are running Mahadasha as an Aries Lagna, very crucial this month. All the 19, every 19 months are important. Every year, one, one month. Okay. Uh, so, 15th May to 15th June is very crucial for you. Okay. Then, which house? Fifth house, Leo. No. <laughs> Sixth house. Virgo, and I'm talking of Vedic astrology here. I'm not talking of uh, Western tropical astrology. Okay, so then when Sun enters, uh, Sun or Mercury enters Virgo, very, 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 very crucial. So, for example, uh, now it is August and Sun uh, for 14th August. So now Sun is about to enter Leo, or maybe it has already entered. So then. 15 August, 15 September, it's in Leo. Then 15 September to 15 October, it's going to enter Virgo. So Virgo becomes very crucial. And then, of course, the 10th house, Capricorn, 15 January to 15 February. Why? Because that's the house which the Dasha Lord is indicating. And then the 11th house also. Because the 11th house is also the house of money and finances. So that means 15 January to 15 February to 15 March becomes extremely crucial. Okay, so now this does not mean that the other houses are not crucial, the transits. Now, um, they are important, but these three houses are most crucial because they will activate the dasha actually. Okay, transits don't give results, they activate dasha. So many times people get confused. 
What does a transit do? What does a dasha do? Who gives results? Is it a dasha or a transit? Transits never give any results. Transits can only do one thing. They can activate the dashas. That's all. They cannot give you anything which the dasha does not promise. And that is why many times people, they send me mails. Oh, my Venus is transiting 7th house. Will I get married this month? Well, Venus transits a house for 25 days approx. So does it mean that... Um, so everybody will just you know meet somebody and get married in those 25 days it doesn't happen right if the horoscope indicates that there is denial of marriage in the upcoming dashas then your venus may transit any house any sign with any conjunction you won't get married it's very simple and if you are destined to get married during that dasha then it doesn't matter venus is in which house moon transiting in second seventh eleven can give you marriage very quickly just in a flick of second Provided the dasha is agreeing. Okay? So, therefore, it's crucial that you uh, analyze the dashas and then you check the transits. Now, you may ask, okay, Saturn is also the Karaka for the 10th house. What about Saturn? That is very important. But the thing is, for Saturn, uh, it's very difficult because uh, Saturn will change the sign only one, once in two and a half years. So, now suppose some uh, this Aries ascendant uh, Saturn, let's say, uh, now it's a different scenario because now Saturn is himself in Capricorn. But let's assume this Saturn was in Gemini. Okay. Then, so maybe Saturn just entered Gemini. So then you, then uh, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. Okay. So three years. So seven and a half years. So after seven and a half years, when Saturn enters Virgo, Okay, I'm not saying it will enter now, but I'm assuming, let's assume Saturn is in Gemini. Saturn has just entered Gemini today, okay? So after seven and a half years, it enters Virgo. Then those two and a half years become very, 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 very crucial. Okay. Then again, 7th house, 8th house, 9th house, not very important. Then 10th house, 11th house, those five years, two houses becomes very crucial. Okay, but Sun and Mercury's transit, you will keep getting always. So similarly, if you are uh, getting, uh, if you are, the size linked with the seventh house, okay? So suppose you have, uh, you have Mercury in the seventh and your dasha of Mercury has started. So then you might get married during this dasha. So then which planet should you check? You should check Venus and Jupiter, Jupiter and Venus. If you are a man, then you must check Venus. And if you are a woman, then you must check Jupiter. And which houses should you check? The 3rd, 7th and 11th. All right. So these houses will activate this, this dasha which you have. All right. So therefore, um, it's, it's very easy to understand how, how, which transit will activate the dasha, which is the most important transit actually. Okay. And then once you finalize the month, you can finalize the days of the month. You can check the transit of the moon. So, Suppose you are running 7th house dasha and you are planning to uh, get married or you know, ha have a look with a pros prospect. Then uh, if moon is transiting the 3rd, 7th or 11th, very good. You can do it that time. No problem. So this is how you plan your life actually. All right. Otherwise, you will just uh, whimsically do things. I mean, if you are not using astrology, that's fine. But if you know astrology and you want to use it properly, then this is how you have to systematically use it. First, check your dashas. Then you check the transits. Then you check the trines. Then you check the karakas. Why I am saying Jupiter, Venus? Because Jupiter and Venus are the karakas for the seventh house. Okay. So, uh, this is how you can know uh, among this Mahadasha. And you can do this for Antardasha also. Okay. So, if your Antardasha is of... Uh, Let's say your son Antar Dasha is going on. Any Mahadasha. And son is the Karaka for which houses? So, so let's assume son is uh, situated in the fourth house. Okay. So uh, then the transit of the fourth house, eighth house and twelfth house becomes very crucial. And moon and Venus also because they are also the Karakas for the fourth house. To some extent Mars and Mercury are also. Mars, Mars represents property and Mercury shows education. Uh, but it depends. So if you are at the age of 30, then you don't have to check market because you may not go and go and go and study in school again. If you're planning to do some masters or PhD, then you must check market. But in 30s, generally people do not do masters, you know, 
in general, I would say. Okay. They might do PhD, but primarily the masters they will do, do during 20s. If you are doing executive MBA, that's a different story. So then you uh, have to check uh, Moon, Venus, and Mars because that is the age when your mind is going towards buying property. Or if you are planning to buy vehicle, then it's Venus. Okay. Or if you are planning to decorate your home, then Moon and Venus. So this is how you have to see. So learn the basics, learn the Karakas, go to my Astrology Basics playlist videos, see who are the Karakas for which houses, all right? And then analyze yourself, all right? Thank you very much. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the videos on Karakas, I'll put it here, okay? God is there with you all the time. Just look for him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below, exoticastrology.in.